Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. This time we're going to be looking at the new tank exterior system coming in patch 10 Rubicon to World of Tanks. The key difference now is that emblems and inscriptions are going to affect your crew skills. I'm going to let you know everything about this new system and also my opinions about it. So as you may all know, there has already been a bonus to applying camouflage to your vehicle. On a light tank, it decreases the distance which your vehicle can be spotted by the enemy by 3%. Now there are three different map types in World of Tanks. There are winter maps, summer maps, and desert maps. So if you want to have this camouflage bonus on all of the different map types, it's either going to cost you 600 gold to apply to a tier eight light tank, which you'll be able to keep forever, or alternatively, you can spend 240,000 credits and then that bonus will be active for 30 days. Now, it might come to a surprise as you that it is actually 3% for light tanks and not 5% as commonly believed. That's because back in patch 8.6, Wargaming changed it from being a flat 5% to all of the vehicles to 4% for tank destroyers, as we can see here for the FV215B183. 3% for your medium tanks, such as this Comet, and also for the light tanks, as we saw with the WZ-132. And finally, heavies get 2%, and self-propelled guns get 2%. But this isn't new, it's been like this since patch 8.6. And just to triple check, I got my WZ-132 on the 9.10 test server, and also on the 10.0 test server, and was spotted at the same distance of 263 meters by a Cromwell with 376 meters view range. So apart from now Wargaming visually revealing what the bonus is to you, nothing has changed with regards to the camouflage. Now let's focus on what has changed, and that is that now emblems and inscriptions provide bonuses to either your entire crew or to specific crew members. Perhaps you want to fire faster, then why not boost up your loader? Or if you want to increase your view range, then your commander is the way to go for your light tanks. However, if you're more of a holistic player, you can still get that all-round bonus. So let me show you exactly how these emblems work. You can either scroll through the entire list and take a look to see what you fancy, or alternatively use the filter button that's here. Maybe I only want to use emblems that apply bonuses to all of my crew members. Then I can click this filter and then take a look to see what my options are. Alternatively, maybe I only want to boost my loader. Then I can check out to see what's available. Now I can understand the principle behind this. Maybe your loader really likes hogs and having a big fat bog pig on the side of your tank is going to make him just that little bit happier and he'll slam in those shells 3% faster. And that's right, you can have specific bonuses for a loader that will increase his base crew skill by 3% per emblem that you choose. So I can have a hog on one side, maybe I can also have a hog on the other, and then I can also try and find some loader inscriptions as well, which could boost my loader's skill by up to 12%. Once you've decided on all of your purchases, you can see them itemized here and then decide whether you want to purchase them or not. And I do like some of the translations. Apparently this means I have enormous opportunities to satisfy my wishes. I think that might have been lost in translation. One thing that's good about this system is that if you want to have hog on both sides of your tanks, you only have to pay for it once. Say you've decided that you no longer want to boost your loader and instead you maybe want to boost your commander because your commander prefers tigers and not hogs then you can do so as well. And once you've purchased the emblems on a tank, if you do want to switch back, it doesn't cost you anything more once you've already purchased them. However, maybe I want to apply these same emblems to get the same bonuses on another one of my Chinese light tanks. Well, unfortunately, it looks like you're going to have to purchase them again for every single tank that you get, which I think is very greedy by Wargaming. To be honest, if I'm going to spend 105 gold on a tiny little emblem on my tank, which is going to increase my commander skill by a little bit, at least only make me purchase it once war gaming, I've got hundreds of tanks in my garage. One thing I should also mention is that this 3% bonus for an individual crew member is not active the whole time. For example, the hog emblem is only active if your vehicle has less than 20% health, which is denoted by the asterisk when you're searching through the emblems. And for example, this Tiger Emblem, which boosts my commander's skill by 3%, is active for 20 seconds after you have critically hit an enemy vehicle. Well, that doesn't sound like a very good deal to me. But don't worry, if you're looking for bonuses that are active the whole time, 
There are 2% availables for individual crew members, or if you want to apply crew skill to all of your crew members, it's going to be a 1% flat bonus, as we can see here. But it should be mentioned that there are some 2% to all of your crew bonuses, but they have activation conditions. For example, this Ace of Hearts is only active while there are at least two non-destroyed enemy heavy tank or tank destroyers within 50 meters radius of your vehicle. To be exact, there's currently 10 of them, but remember this is a test server and everything is subject to change. So the only way to get 2% bonus to all of your crew, which could lead to an 8% total bonus, is to be right in the thick of it. But if you want to have that flat, all round, all the time bonus, then you're best to go for your country's flag on one side of the tank or the other. Now one thing that would be interesting here is, for example, maybe I wanted to have a Belarusian and a British flag on my tank. Well, that's going to cost me 240 gold. Whereas if I wanted to have the same flag on both sides as I mentioned earlier, that's 120. Looking at the all crew bonuses, for China at least, there are three inscriptions that give you 1% bonus and there's one inscription that gives you 2% bonus to all of your crew if your vehicle has less than 20% health. But the thing that kind of annoys me is that currently I don't have emblems on any of my tanks at all because frankly I don't really care. The only tanks that I do have emblems on are ones that I feel are truly special to me such as the Comet. I have a Bell of Russian flag on one side and Harbinger of the Apocalypse on the other. And that's because this tank can only have one emblem and one inscription. So does that mean that I'm only going to be able to get a total of 2% bonus to all of my crew when there are many other vehicles that get 4% bonuses? While the American tier 7 medium tank, the T20, can have two emblems and two inscriptions. So effectively the T20 is going to gain 4% all round crew skill next patch, while the Comet is only going to gain 2. Uh, that doesn't sound very balanced. It gets even worse, some tanks such as the Rudy can't actually have any emblems or inscriptions on. How is that fair, Wargaming? That's completely ridiculous. And also what's annoying is that my current emblems, for example Harbinger of the Apocalypse, doesn't provide a flat bonus, it has a bonus on activation condition. For example this one is active for 30 seconds after you have destroyed an enemy vehicle. Well this annoys me for two reasons. One, the gold that I've spent isn't going to be what I want to do with it in the next patch. But you could argue that previously it was doing nothing, so if you use it in the next patch, nothing has changed. But the thing that really annoys me is effectively Wargaming are forcing me to change from an emblem which I enjoyed having to a different one if I want to get a different bonus. And of course, let's not forget about the price tag of having a new emblem on your tank. Which brings me really to my final point here. Let's use the Centurion Action 10 as an example. And because I think the best bonuses will be active the whole of the time, but I'm not feeling very patriotic, I'm going to put a 3-9 on the side of my tank. I don't even know what the hell that means, but I'm going to put it on there anyway because I want to be competitive and have the bonus crew skill. And I don't even know what am I going to put on my tank for emblems. All right, I'll put Brothers in Arms on both sides because that's how I feel. So this is the most economical way to get the new bonuses. It's going to cost me 300 gold to be able to get the extra 4% crew skills. And that's with having the same emblem and inscription on both sides of my tank because I'm cheaping out and I don't want to have to pay the 600 gold it would cost me per tank if I wanted to actually use different emblems and inscriptions on either side. And this is what really grinds my gears about this, that let's be honest, 4% crew skill is gigantic. There's already a couple of things in the game which give you nearly 4% crew skill. Oh, what's this? Improved ventilation class two, which applies 5% plus crew skill to all of your crew members. So what effectively that Wargaming is saying now is that having emblems, and inscriptions on your tank is the equivalent of having an extra equipment slot, or at least 80% of an extra equipment slot. Or alternatively, the other way to get crew skill is to have Brothers in Arms, which gives a 5% bonus to all of your crew members if you have the perk on every single one of them. Now, I don't think anyone really has a problem with Brothers in Arms, because it's permanent, and it doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you credits, it doesn't cost you gold. It's a perk that's given to you for time invested by playing that tank. And while it does mean that more experienced players have an advantage over their opponents, I do feel like they've earned it with Brothers in Arms. 
And with regards to having ventilation on your tank, well, if you buy it when it's on sale, even on tier 10 tanks, that's a one-off purchase of 250 to 300,000 credits. So I guess the next argument should be, well, these emblems and inscriptions are available for credits too, right? Well, yes, yes, they are. You can buy them for credits. However, it costs you 60,000 credits per month, per inscription, and per emblem. And one thing that's interesting about purchasing it by credits, that if you own it for a month, you still have to pay double anyway. It's not like the gold, where if you unlock an emblem or an inscription for gold, you can use it on the other side for free. You still have to pay double if you want to have the emblem on both sides of your tanks when you do it for credits for the rental period. And so let's do a test. Let's put emblems and inscriptions and camouflage for credits on every single side of my tank and see how much it's going to cost me. It's going to cost me over half a million credits. To be exact, 540,000 credits to rent a bonus for a month. And this is going to make my crew 4% better and make my vehicle 3% more sneaky. And then after a month, I lose that bonus. And just let me put my face cam back on for this. Wargaming, I think you are having a laugh with this system. To force people to pay over half a million credits every single month on each one of their tier 10 tanks just so they can play as competitively as somebody who invests gold into the game is absolutely ridiculous. At the very least, Wargaming, you need to change this system so there is no rental period. If I'm paying half a million credits for one of my tanks to get these bonuses, I should keep them forever. No rental period, and if you were to make that change, I think this would be okay. Because what it means is that you're getting a 4% crew bonus and 3% concealment bonus for roughly the same price as an equipment slot. And that would be so much better than what you're trying to force upon people with this rental period. Let's not beat around the bush here. When Wargaming implemented the camouflage bonus system ages ago, it really was a pay to win move. Before that, I had camouflage on none of my tanks. This game isn't about looking pretty for me. It's about getting in there, being competitive, having fun and kicking some butt. When they released the camouflage bonuses, I started to apply camouflage to all of my tanks because I didn't want to think that there was somebody out there who had a bonus over me, which would make me less competitive. And of course, I had the option of either investing the credits or investing the gold. Now, I'm in a very fortunate position where you guys are absolutely crazy. And for some reason, some of you send me gold to say thank you for your videos. And so it's not a big deal for me and I could brush this under the carpet all I want. But I'm putting myself in your position as if I didn't have a lot of gold available to me and I certainly wouldn't use the camouflage. And I would think Wargaming were having an absolute laugh with this upcoming emblem and inscription system. There's no doubt about it. This effectively means that if you invest money into the game or you spend an astronomical amount of time grinding for credits, you're now going to be the equivalent of 80% of an equipment slot better than everyone else. And it's something that I strongly disagree with, and I really, really hope that they do not implement these changes. Or, at the very, very least, Wargaming, get rid of this rental system at the bottom left. If I'm paying half a million credits just so I can be competitive, at least let me keep it forever. And also just a final passing mention that I guess there's a little bit of hope because there seems to be a filter for mission camos and also purchase camos. So maybe Wargaming will give us an opportunity to earn these emblems, to earn these inscriptions and to earn this camouflage without having to invest gold or a ludicrous amount of credits for a rental period. And for me, that's the only two ways that really they can get around this if they decide to implement it into the game. Or it will be an astronomical negative for the argument that this is not a pay to win game. And if you guys agree with me, then let me know down below, have your say. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like down below. And I would absolutely love to hear your opinions in the comment section, which I'm going to spend a long time reading and try and amalgamate all of your opinions and submit them personally along with my own feelings that I have discussed in this video to as many relevant people at Wargaming as possible. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, you've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.